Our main story tonight concerns the fact that summer's here. It's been getting hotter and hotter outside, so we thought, why not take a break and have some summer fun? We're allowed to have some summer fun, right? So tonight, we're going to talk about popsicles. There are tons of them in America, and when they get too hot, it can be a real problem. Sorry, did I say popsicles? I meant prisons. We're going to talk about prisons. There are tons of them in America, and when they get too hot, it can be a real problem. Don't act surprised. You knew no fun was happening here. You remember what our summer fun episode was this time last year? Voting by mail. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at yourself. You chose to be here. And look, the fact is, heat in prisons is a big problem. We've talked repeatedly on this show about the injustices of mass incarceration and how little society seems to care. And a pretty good example of that is the fact that in some of the hottest areas of the country, these states, over half the prisons lack air conditioning in their housing areas. And in Texas, that's the case in nearly 75% of their prisons. And that is not good. Because in summer, the heat index inside of them can hit 150 degrees. Plus, there is a growing population of older prisoners whose age makes them more susceptible to the heat. And over 40% of incarcerated people have a chronic medical condition, raising the risk of heat stroke. So a lot of them worry about what happens when the weather turns hot. I have heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes. There's three conditions that even TDC admits could make a person susceptible to extreme heat conditions. So my heart has to work a whole lot harder than the average guy just to try to cool my body down. And as a result, I suffer from extreme chest pains on days where it's extremely hot. I get sick real fast. That is remarkably dangerous. And I would argue that the only time getting murdered by the heat is acceptable is if you've committed the crime of being a lobster. But unless you happen to be a tasty sea weirdo with edible arms and a pile of scrumptious ass meat that pairs beautifully with melted butter, I'm going to say that that is very wrong. And physical conditions are just one part of this. Prisons also house an increasing number of people with mental health concerns who require medications that can compromise their body's ability to regulate temperature. So many avoid taking their medications when it's hot, which may explain why there is an increase in the frequency of suicide watches and self-harm behaviours during the summer months. This situation is so bad, the UN Committee Against Torture has expressed particular concern about deaths from extreme heat exposure in prison facilities in Texas. And while you probably assumed Texas prisons were bad, maybe not international human rights watch list bad. And just to get this out of the way right at the start, if anyone is thinking, well, come on, it's prison, these criminals should not be comfortable, first, fuck you. They're human beings who, I would argue, deserve humane treatment regardless of what they did. But even if you are fully on board with our current system of punitive justice on a ridiculous scale, you should know even some of those upholding this system find the current situation indefensible. Just listen to the former head of one correctional officer's union. You know, I don't have love for these people. We're not trying to make this uh, lush and uh, we're trying to make it humane. These are third world conditions. We're supposed to run prisons, not concentration camps. These, these are institutions for incarceration. The incarceration is their punishment, not, not cooking them to death. Right. And just take a moment to absorb the sentence, we're supposed to run prisons, not concentration camps. If someone helping to run a system is comparing it to a concentration camp, things have gotten way out of hand. If someone said, we're supposed to run a Quiznos, not a concentration camp, you would seriously question what the fuck is going on at that Quiznos. So tonight, let's talk about heat in prisons. Let's start with the obvious question here. If prisons are too hot, which many clearly are, why not put in air conditioning? And that does seem like a pretty easy fix, but whenever it's brought up, Lawmakers and prison officials have claimed that they simply cannot afford it. Although, when making that argument, they've occasionally been slightly more honest than they were perhaps planning to be, like when this Texas state senator appeared on local radio. You know, we, we can talk about this all day. It's not going to change. Uh, the prisons are hot, they're uncomfortable, and the real solution is don't commit a crime and you stay at home and be cool. We're not going to air condition them. One, we don't want to. Number two, we couldn't afford it if we wanted to. Well, hold on there. Let's back up to number one, shall we? We don't want to. Because after you say that, it doesn't really matter what you say next. If people don't care about fixing a problem, 
They're just not going to fix it, however simple the solution is. It's why your software update still interrupts you every single day. Sure, you could just click on the alert and follow the basic steps to make the updates, but have you done that? Of course not. Why? Because you could not give one single solitary fuck. And it seems that Texas in particular really doesn't want to put in air conditioning. It actually spent $7 million on a lawsuit to fight installing AC in one prison's housing area, despite the fact the estimated cost of installation was only around $4 million. And they've also thrown around some suspiciously high estimates. They once claimed that it would cost $109 million to install AC in a unit for developmentally disabled prisoners, even though the entire housing unit cost just $26 million to build. And look, I admit, I don't know much about AC installation. If you pointed at a random building and said it cost $10,000 to install AC in there, I'd say, OK, sure. And if you pointed at another one and said it cost $3 million to install it in there, I'd say, yeah, makes sense. But if you pointed at a building and said it cost four times the price of that building to install AC in it, I'd say, I think you somehow know less about air conditioning than I do. And that too expensive argument gets even harder to take when you consider that in some prisons, there is climate control, just not for the prisoners. Because some have AC in staff offices. And then there is this. Two years ago, prison officials spent more than $700,000 on new climate-controlled housing facilities. For prisoners, no. For the prison's in-house pig farms. Officials say the cooling systems are, quote, consistent with any swine operation. Look. I'm not against pigs getting treated comfortably. I love pigs. Their springy tails, their too big ears, their stupid flat noses and their horrible eyes. Pigs are like big chubby dogs you can eat at Christmas. I just question prioritising their comfort over humans. And the thing is, correction systems do seem to acknowledge that they have a problem with heat. It's just they often try to treat it with ridiculous half measures. The Texas prison system even produced this video on what staff should do when they see someone about to pass out from heat exhaustion. If conscious and alert, have the person drink water or a rehydrating sports drink. Do not give them caffeinated drinks, as these will contribute to further dehydration. Sprinkle or spray them with water and apply cool water or wet cloths to the person's neck, armpits, and groin. Fan the person if there is no breeze. Okay. Flicking water in their face and fanning them with a clipboard is just not going to cut it. And at that point, it makes basically just as much sense to recommend lick the person's sweat off their forehead or rub them with a DVD of Captain Phillips. Sure, it's technically a gesture, but it's not going to do much. And the problem is, when prisons use things like large fans and water misters, they only help to a certain threshold of heat, and beyond it, they can actually make things worse. Water misters increase humidity, and the CDC has explicitly said that it does not recommend the use of fans above a 95-degree heat index, as they actually increase heat stress by blowing air that is warmer than the body's temperature. And dangerous situations get compounded by the fact that when heat-related issues occur, prisons can show very little urgency in addressing them. Take what happened to Larry McCullum. He was serving an 11-month sentence for cashing a bad check and began showing symptoms of heat stroke. But prison employees didn't call EMS until over 40 minutes after he was found convulsing. When McCullum finally arrived at the hospital, his body temperature was 109 degrees and he died days later. And when that prison's warden was questioned about the delay in medical treatment, this was his ridiculous response. If you were at home and your wife was having a heart attack and you called 911 and it took a half hour for them to arrive, would you have a problem with that? That's speculating. I don't know. I wouldn't know if she had a heart attack or not. Okay. I would have a problem with that. Just letting you know. Okay? If my wife was having a heart attack and I called 911 and it took a half hour for an ambulance to arrive, you, you don't feel comfortable saying that you, that you too would, would have an issue with, with that? I would not. I would have to figure okay. out whether it's a heart attack or not. Okay. Maybe just bad chili. What the fuck? First, 
no one would ever confuse someone having violent convulsions with having bad chili. Second, bad chili has a name and it's called Hormel. Show some respect to that can of bean nightmares. And finally, guessing your wife's heart attack might be just bad chili is a terrible answer, not only because that's not how heart attacks work, it's also not how hypotheticals work. In this scenario, your wife is having a heart attack. You can't just ignore the premise. If someone asks, if you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would you choose? You're not allowed to say, no thanks, I already ate. That's not the point of the question. And amazingly, as bad as that response was, it wasn't even the worst moment in his deposition. Because months later, he was asked about how the population of his prison might be more susceptible to heat-related illnesses. And just watch this infuriating exchange. Do you suspect that some of the people that come into your facility are going to have hypertension? I do not know. Do you suspect that some of the people that come into your facility are going to be, I don't know, older than 60? I do not know. Do you suspect that some of the people who come into your facility are going to be older than 40? I do not know. Do you suspect that some of the people that are going to come into your facility um, are going to be on psychotropic medications? I do not know. Wouldn't any competent supervisor uh, Shouldn't he or she know the answers to those questions? I do not know. OK, we get it. You don't know a lot of things. I almost wish that line of questioning had continued. Do you suspect that some of the people who come into your facilities are fire mutants powered by heat? I do not know. Do you have a tattoo of Peppa Pig on your lower back? I do not know. If you were sure no one would ever find out, would you have consensual sex with a dolphin? I do not know. Would you hit Bruce Willis with your car if given the opportunity? I do not know. Why do you think responding with I do not know to every question asked of a person makes them sound like a total dipshit? I do not know. So look, when you put all of this together, Prisoners in this country are desperately uncomfortable and sometimes dying due to the heat, and no one seems to give enough of a shit to do anything about it. And while a lot of the facilities that I've shown you tonight have been in Texas, that is not because it's the only culprit. It's just one of the only states where this story has been extensively reported on camera. But you can find accounts of similar problems in places like Louisiana, and in Alabama, and in Florida, and in Michigan, and in Virginia. This is a deadly situation, and it's only going to get worse, especially as summers are getting hotter and hotter. And while this is clearly just one small part of a much larger discussion about whether and how prisons should exist in this country, until such time as we have that discussion, there's actually an easy solution to this one problem, and that is prisons need air conditioning, so put air conditioning in. That's it. I know this show has trained you to anticipate nuance, but this one is really pretty straightforward. We shouldn't be cooking prisoners to death. The end. That's just not something we should be allowing under any circumstances, because locking human beings in rooms with a heat index of 150 degrees begs the question, how on earth could anyone anywhere think that it's OK to do that? And to borrow the go-to answer of an extremely weird, extremely cruel man, I do not know.